this is really the discussion of you know for the of the body and um i guess i i see all kinds of people i and i think it's great that the churches are standing you know mm-hmm. they're starting to stand and they're starting to do different things because we're, so we're able to recognize yeah what the world is doing right and we're not going to be told no that's not what's happening right you know it's it's obvious yeah and so this is the gathering this is the discussion of the body mm-hmm. and um on not just standing but now we discuss how do we handle what's going on here mm-hmm. what do we do mm-hmm. and we got to throw ideas all you know back and forth what the word of god says most importantly is our instructions yeah because it's all right there for us you know in the word of god and we just you know discussing it and bringing out his scripture is what's so vitally important yeah right absolutely absolutely cool yeah that'll work are we live we are is this thing on yes (laughs) just making sure yeah yeah. so we're just picking up right in the middle wherever we were at yeah okay yeah let's just go with that and let's make it happen here okay. or let's you know we gotta pray yeah most importantly yeah, well let's do that all right lord yep. jesus we thank you so much for the body of christ and that we're that you're gonna work in the midst of us father we're gathered in your name in jesus name and we're looking for the answers through your word lord on how to respond to the world how to respond to what it is that we're seeing and and doing lord we we love you and we ask that you would be with each one of us that you would speak uh and we listen in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. but yeah you've been doing a lot of official research why don't you start i know i I, not necessarily on all these lines but yeah god definitely ain't been silent but um and when I kind of got up this morning, uh, it was just, you know, God just put some things on my heart and kind of been talking to me actually, like, you need to talk about this kind of a thing today. And it was just something that was in the back of my brain. And uh, on, like, the last podcast that I did and Connect the Dots, um, by the way, we say Mary and Larry and Jamie over here, we're all here kind of having a round table thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, at any rate... Um, something about connecting the head and the heart and the power of love basically shedding shining the light through that that can't be hidden and what does scripture say about that that deep spot calls it the innermost being and uh that's found essentially in um proverbs 4 20 through 23 and i'll start here my son attend to attend to my words turn your ear to my sayings let them not depart from your eyes Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to their whole body. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Mm. And then in John 7, 38 from the Amplified, it says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow flow continually rivers of living water. Again, there's that innermost being thing. And that's the place where God really touches us, mm-hmm. is right there. I mean, he reaches through the cosmos from his infinite place through the fog and touches us right on the shoulder. And it's in those, it, 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 that's where that connection is, because we're more than just flesh and blood. We are that spirit that, that is here and supposed to operate inside the way that the kingdom operates. And as we become used to the truth, how do we confront yeah, issues that are not conducive to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control? It, it, it's, 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 you know, those are the fruits of the Spirit. You know, how are we supposed to handle these things that come in and want to disrupt that? When we're caught at the bottom of the barrel, nothing but darkness above us, and it feels like that innermost being is just shut off. Where do we go? How do we get there and, and, and reestablish that connection in a manner of speaking with God Almighty? And here we are in a place where 
evil is all around and um we're just we're overwhelmed by it at times frustrated angry pushed into a corner being told to shut up not keep you know keep our mouth shut about these different things these different truths and yet everything inside of our entire being is just screaming let me talk but we can't talk yeah because it's offensive and right. somebody's not going to like it mm -hmm. and where do we find that cuz i mean really honestly you can get out there on a bandwagon or a high horse or a soapbox and just bam, 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 just shoot everybody down yep. using your own common sense. But unless it is touched from that place that is the center of your innermost being and it is infused with love, that message will continually fall on deaf ears and you'll get charged. Instead, if it's not consumed with love, you'll be charged with being a hypocrite. You'll be charged with being judgmental and homophobic and uh, heterophobic and all these different phobias and things like that, xenophobic, all these different things. And what, because I mean, really honestly, everything is so polarized. Where do we sit in the middle of all that as a Christian? Keeping the sensitivities of the Lord, keeping the love of the Lord, but yet driven to feel like we need to get a whip together and clear out the temple like Jesus did. You know, where are where is our place in all this? Well, you know, what is we have a complacency mm -hmm. that has developed in the church. We just put up and 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 we bend to the will of the world. And now because we're being uh, censored, and I'm sorry if none of you actually understand that, <laughs> hmm. you know, but thankfully Bob came out and spoke on that, and this is a real thing. It's not a, it's not a mystery. It's, a, we actually see it in the sanctuary page. I mean, where it's actually being, uh, we're actually being censored, and we are th one of thousands of, you know, ministries that have the same thing. And you, you look at that, and we just put up with it. We just keep taking it, and we keep taking it, and we keep taking it. And the and we have to dive into the Scripture, understand that it does come from their, our innermost being, but, we are, but the church is known, or the big, you know, big C church, the, the uh, corporation of the church has produced a bunch of people that know very little about the Word of God, couldn't defend their faith to save their life. And they just repeat things that they thought, oh, that's what I believe, so I'm going to say this. You know, anytime somebody comes up to me and gives me uh, whatever it may be, like if we, if we have a belief system, if, if our belief in Jesus is rooted within the Word of God and we meditate on that Word of God, and we meet with him. What comes out, what it's saying from our innermost being is going to come him. So they cannot like that, the rest of the world. They cannot like what they hear, They can, which is why they're censoring, which is why this is happening. But they've also been given the example of people that can't defend their faith. So that's the ones they're going to highlight. Those are the fools. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're a fool because we've already seen this part. They don't see the depth. They don't see, you know, whatever. Because they're, they're not looking at the, the people that are deep. But that really is why our, our defense and why we've let things go and why we cannot stand. How are you able to stand if you don't know what it is that you believe or the core of what you believe? I mean, if you don't even know that, but that's it, the church is full of millions of these. But now they're starting to go, wait a minute, there's a big problem here. And then all of a sudden you start going, uh, I think I need to get to know God because this is getting weird, right? The whole world is starting to go crazy, so it's it's getting weird. Well, go ahead. Oh, I didn't really have anything right okay. on the top of my brain, but okay. go ahead. Well, yeah. I'll say something then because yes, I think please when do. you <laughs> when you were talking about complacency, yes, um, I think 
there's a couple different ways in my experience that I've seen that is that sometimes people just don't want to get their hands dirty. Yeah. They don't want to get into the nitty gritty oh, with yeah. someone because then maybe their vulnerabilities come out if they're, does that make sense? Oh yeah. Like in a situation with someone, well, then I might have to admit that I have failures and faults too if I get that close with somebody to help them through their yeah season of darkness of whatever you know yes, some I of it do. I feel like is that nobody just wants to get into the nitty gritty I'm guilty of that yeah there are times when I'm just like oh, I, I got enough right. of my own what not going on to try and help somebody else um I also think sometimes there's another piece of that too that might be um well, I've learned over the years that sometimes if you're, if there's someone who's maybe argumentative or someone's just really trying to hammer home, mm -hmm. no, this is what the Bible says. This is your wrong. Yeah. Your view is wrong. Okay. You may be right. Right. And let it go. Because sometimes it's not it's worth not to worth try it. to argue. Yeah. It's you're not, not going to change it. their mind. So. And you know what? Both of the th two things that you said that both have kind of almost the same answer. And. And we we were taught we were touching a little bit on this, is that it's not it's not even not of a matter of. You don't want to expose yourself, instead of both of the both of the people speaking already realize that we're both idiots. I mean, it, it wouldn't that solve a ton of ton of you know problems if we were just like, <laughs> well, I'm an idiot, you're an idiot. So let's talk, but you, in other words, no one can have like this massive authority, again, from the innermost mm -hmm. being. If, if God's going to speak, it's going to come from there. It's going to come from our innermost being. We have to just be that vessel of, of um, humility. Mm -hmm. And you can't, if, you're, if, if there's a battle between two, two people, and this is happening every day, all day long, with thousands and thousands of people, uh, my answer's right, your answer's wrong. Right, yeah. but we can't we can't ever admit that you're wrong and I'm wrong. Right, mm -hmm. we can't do that. Um, but we we have in all shape or form, in my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion. The old nice famous uh, phrase of today. My in my yeah, opinion. Make sure you say it's my oh yeah, my gosh, right. I cannot stand it. Don't want to offend anybody, dude. I hate that. It's just so stupid. It just leaves this world wide open for whatever truth you think, you know. But um, I believe we've there is no more bridge between ideologies. The world has done this thing of removing that, or removing that possible bridge. How many times have we been able to say, let's like the one thing that everybody's like, oh, I love like these memes of like, we can still, we can disagree and still get along and still love each other, right? Everybody's like, yes, that's what I want, but nobody follows it. And it's like, okay, so if that's the case and now we're getting to the place where we're, it's being taken to the streets, my belief is this, my belief, is, and now we're there's physical war. That's where we are. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, well, that's just something that's happening you know, on TV, on YouTube, and blah, blah. Yeah, it's happening, but but they're still not thinking the progression of mankind. How, where we go with this, where we always go with this. And there's an end and it's a bloody end. Mm -hmm. And then finally we're like, oh my gosh, can you believe that we killed each other? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I do. I do believe that. I, I, it's like, wow, wow, what a foolish thing to even think that that's not even, um, that that's not the possibility. It's always been our pattern. Mm -hmm. So now we're at that place again where now it's physical altercations because your ideas and my ideas can't come together. They can't. Right. It's a refusal. Mm -hmm. Right? No, no. You know, there's no, there's the, I know I'm right. Well, how do you know you're right? First off, you're a low information person. If you believe any of that, you're a low information person because you would automatically know if you did your study, if you did take a look at everything, you go, oh, that's not how the world goes around. It's not my idea. It's not my cause that is the biggest problem. 
right? Right. But the biggest disconnect I see is, I mean, and I talked about this before on uh, the connect the dots thing, is uh, what Nietzsche said. He's the guy that popularized the phrase "God is dead" right. and removed the idea. Uh, and he contemplated what the penalty, or not the con- the consequences of removing moral tradition based on God from a society. Yeah. And he said that the next century would be the bloodiest century, you know, of all time. And it was. And it ha- and it absolutely has been and continues to this day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a result of that, uh, we have, you know, we have a revolution, I think, in a lot of ways going on in the, uh, the, the minds of people that, you know, things are just, since God has been removed, now it's starting to catch up. People are starting to see that, that, uh, we have to make more and more rules in order to get along and it's not happening fast enough in the instantaneous culture that we live in so therefore we have to throw off the old way completely and revolutionize the way we think and since a lot of those moral traditions were based on an idea of God we have now gone into this baseless thing and are struggling where in the world do we find our absolutes and as a result you can ha- you have people that are just clinging to anything that drives them their passions <clears throat> and then basing their whole life around it or they're you know giving them a reason to live because without a god without a moral center we we, we lose all sense of meaning and without that sense of meaning we'll grasp after anything to give our lives meaning and so you know, that's why we're so far polarized a lot of times between right and left and up and down, religious, not religious, the whole nine yards. It's 100%. Either you agree with what is common in the middle that we can all agree on and that there are no absolutes, everything is relative, uh, and this would probably be a good spot to throw in this little bit by uh, uh, Steve Turner. Um, he uh, wrote an article, uh, it was basically called The Modern Thinker's Creed. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'll just do you care if I do it real quick? Yeah, go Check for it. it. Yeah, it says we believe in Marx, Freud, and Darwin. We believe everything is okay as long as you don't hurt anyone to the best of your definition of hurt and to the best of your knowledge. We believe in sex before, during, and after marriage. We believe in the therapy of sin. We believe that adultery is fun. We believe that sodomy is okay. We believe that taboos are taboo. We believe that everything's getting better despite evidence to the contrary. The evidence must be investigated and you can prove anything with evidence. We believe there's something in horoscopes, UFOs, and bent spoons. Jesus was a good man just like Buddha, Muhammad, and ourselves. He was a good moral teacher, though we think he, we think his morals were bad. Or his good morals were bad. We believe that all religions are basically the same, at least the one that we read was. The, they believe in love and goodness. They only offer, they only differ on matters of creation, sin, heaven, hell, God, and salvation, which is the core elements of religion, right. I would say. <laughs> you know, that so agrees on, disagrees on everything. Uh, we believe that after death comes nothing because when you ask the dead what happens, they say nothing. If death is not dead, if the dead have lied, then it's compulsory heaven for all excepting perhaps Hitler, Stalin, and Genghis Khan. We believe in Masters and Johnson. What's selected is average. What's average is normal. What's normal is good. We believe in total disarmament. We believe there are direct links between warfare and bloodshed. Uh, duh. We, <laughs> Americans should beat their guns into tractors and the Russians will be sure to follow. We believe that man is essentially good. It's only his behavior that lets him down. This is the fault of society. Society is the fault of conditions, and conditions are the fault of society. We believe that uh, we believe that each man must find the truth that is right for him. Reality will adapt accordingly. The universe will readjust. History will alter. We believe that there is no absolute truth, excepting the truth that there is no absolute truth. We believe in the rejection of creeds and the flowering of individual thought. If chance be the father of all flesh, disaster is his rainbow in the sky. And when you hear state of emergency, sniper kills 10, troops on rampage, youths go looting, bomb blast school, it is but the sound of man worshiping his own maker, which is himself. And that's how we end up with such polarizing view, because it is in stark contrast to the order and... Uh, creation that God intended us to live which is based on love 
and acceptance and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And if we all exercise just a little bit of that, whether you believed in God, Jesus Christ or not, we'd be a lot further along in getting along. Yeah. And so since we just don't want anything to do with that, here's where we are. Yeah. And yeah, here's where we are. What yeah. is the answer to that then? How do we get past the censorship? How do we repackage the message? And I don't know the answer to this by any means. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Other than sure. knowing what I know how to do with loving people one person at a time through sacrifice and um, whatever, uh, you know, agape love. I know how I understand that. Yeah. But how do you break down this, this barrier that we're up against with technology, with that belief system mm-hmm. anyone and well i mean i'll shoot from the hip <laughs> I, I, I it's funny to do to it, it sucks to engineer and be honest i told you i would do it I know, but some, I know you would <laughs> I, let's doing not my mix best our to show with their two. show <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh so, man Question, really. what no, is, no, it, 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 I know it's more than a rhetorical yeah. question. Um, and and uh, these are the same kind of questions. This isn't new. This is this has been going on since the very beginning. These cycles of clinging to God, wondering what He's worth, walking away, and then realizing, oh crap, I just threw the baby out with the bathwater. I need to go back. And uh, so, I mean, the Christians in Rome had the same kind of questions that we do right now, and the answers are still the same. Uh, Paul always stood on, and this has been really relevant to me over the, it's been my mantra for the last couple weeks, is your grace is sufficient. And where we don't know, God's grace is sufficient. And it's important that primarily at the root source, it's focus. You know, those who call on me in a humble or broken place, they will be mended. Those who are lacking wisdom, if they were to ask for it, they will be given to them, and more than they know what to do with it. You know, I forget where it's at. You know, don't worry about what you're going to say when you're, you know, paraded or on trial in front of kings and governors and all these in authority. For the Holy Spirit will come upon you in that time and give you the word that you need to say. Jesus himself said that nothing that you have heard me say has not come directly from the Father. I only speak what the Father wants me to say. If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. I mean, that's how hand and glove that whole relationship is. Now, granted, Jesus is Jesus, and we're trying to get there at some point, so where does it begin with us? Knowing what we don't know. Knowing what we don't know. Is God going to have us rise up and fight? Is he going to have us proclaim the truth? Well, obviously we have to because that's the command. Um, is he going to have... Are, are, we, are some going to nurture and stay hidden Uh, you know in you remember from the apostle paul the kind of dramatization that it gave in this little conflict between um 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 or that what were the two the husband and wife there it was and and, and, uh, it was um um ah, i I know what you're talking about that gimmick uh (laughs) shoot okay uh, whatever all right so the conflict she wanted to stay and take care of the people because if we leave right. Rome, all, leave, all, all light will leave Rome. And yeah. where will the people have to go? Mm-hmm. Then you had the more pragmatic side um, where it was, hey, we need to get out of here yeah. if we're going to live. Yeah. Because we're at death's door 24-7. Yeah. He's knocking. You don't know if the next knock is going to be somebody looking for help or a Roman soldier looking to haul everybody in and essentially pin him up on these stakes all throughout Rome and doused with gasoline and set on fire. Yeah. You know, well, that was the choice. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, I want to point this out, and Bob covered this in, uh, I think it was Thursday, um, his uh, video there what, that have it to do with um, the devil isn't hiding it anymore. Oh, yeah. You know, um, we really have to, because a lot of it we're going, okay, well, what's the right side? I, I'm still to this day completely baffled with how obvious where the truth lies. Even just according to the scripture, that everyone is taking this crazy, like they're trying to figure out which way is the right, like who who's holding the right thing to do today, right? Mm-hmm. And there's so many voices, 
So many. But if you listen, if you know Scripture, if you know God, and you listen to what's being said, you can decipher. And, and here's, here's what's crazy. And, and this was a great point that Bob brought up, and it, and it is absolutely true, you know, about the toothless devil, right? But he has convinced very powerful people. And they're persuasive. They have power. They have things that they can do. That is, it's a great point because it is true. Um, once the enemy has been has has convinced people on what it is that they're supposed to do, or or how to change the world, because I mean, if you take a look, and we try to plan, you know, try to war game this out of everything's going to crap, right? And is everything going to crap because it's just, we just accidentally did this, right? Well, well, you know, human beings, we just get to the place where we're, we just end up doing this. But it's our leaders that are leading us to these places, right? And so we just, we, 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 we try and decide who, which one we're going to listen to, right? And you've got these, well, essentially... I say worldwide, it is a matter right now of freedom versus tyranny. It always kind of has been, but now it's right out front. The last couple of days, just thousands and thousands and thousands of people are meeting, like like in London and all these other major, major cities around the world of saying, like, we've had enough. We've had enough of this craziness, this tyranny and everything being restricted. It's... When nothing makes sense, and I've said this, my flesh, because I'm going to say it right off the bat, my flesh is, is uh, okay, I, first off, I'm one of these people that I'm very punk rock guy. You guys know me. Mm-hmm. I do not like being told what to do. You know, uh, I absolutely cannot stand it. <clears throat> I admit I have problems with authority. and But you know what? You can talk to God about that because that's how he made me. Because it ain't something that's just like my selfishness, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be told what to do. No, because you're out there and you know it. It's the same type of person. And I look at this and I look at I'm looking at all around the world what's happening. And I'm like, oh, this drives me insane. Lord, humble my heart because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to end up saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. Um, talking to somebody, giving giving them my take on it, and all of a sudden I cause them to do something stupid. You know what I mean? You don't want to do anything out of the flesh in scenarios like this. But I also see what's being done where nothing makes any sense from our leaders. Nothing. And all of the authorities on this part of, you know, obviously I'm talking about the virus. Obviously, you know, we're talking about, but there is no solid answer everybody's saying this person's saying this and that person's saying this and that person's saying this and so we live in the society where we go well which one do i listen to which one do i like the most you know like which one is saying it the most pretty way you know and it ends up causing this conflict because when we take whoop, geez i don't know i'm gonna have to get used to this uh but we we decide to take a side and then all of a sudden we defend it with our life you know like no this is this is what's actually happening and really, if you look at what the leaders are doing, they give, give us all these instructions on what it is that we're supposed to do, right? And this isn't a rebellion against, this is a real virus, this is a real thing. But the tyranny, the, the, the part of removal of everybody's rights as a human being is absolutely insane. And if, if our leaders are making choices for everyone, And none of those choices make any sense whatsoever. They don't even know. In fact, it changes consistently. This is a sign of bad leaders. This is a sign of people that don't know what they're doing because they keep changing it. So if they keep changing it, how are we supposed to live? Everybody's supposed to comply. So it's just this bounce back and forth of what should I do? Should I do this? Should I do If we're not grounded in the word of God, which already explains who are we he explains our creator he explains what we're supposed to do if we know the truth first off big time the the biggest motivator of any 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 body of people 
throughout history, the motivating factor to get them to do whatever you want them to do is fear. Fear. That's Period. Exactly it. Fear. They're making the wrong decision. I'm, you know, has always right. been. Yep, has always been and will always be because fear. evil people decide this is how I'm going to do it. You know, and, and pa- Pastor Bob used to tell us when he went to cemetery hmm. uh, or the seminary that he would, uh, they were taught guilt. You guilt people to stay in the pew. And obviously he removed that part of it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. that's what he was taught. In order to keep your audience, you feel, so it's the same thing. Guilt, that's fear. That's what I said. Yeah. These yeah. negative feelings. Yeah, and then we have this worldwide gathering together, everyone deciding, all the leaders going, this is what you're supposed to do. Well, as a Christian, we're noticing that we're not allowed to gather in churches, not allowed to sing and worship God in California. Come on, guys. You should be able to see these things and go, okay, that is wrong. Right? It's yeah. supposed to be. It's supposed to be. According to our faith, not not this whole thing of like, well, we don't want anybody. No, 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 no. The scriptures, what does it say? There's only been a handful that have really stood up to that publicly. Yeah. First off, it says not John to fear. John MacArthur was one, mm-hmm. didn't Correct. Yeah. yeah. It says not to fear. So everyone else wants to jump on the bandwagon of be afraid, do what you're supposed to do, you know, all these things. Well, there's a lot of control in that. You have to think about this through. Think it through. There's lots of control involved here. We, born, uh, born-again Christians have a guide we're supposed to follow his guide what he says he says not to fear and we're supposed to love and take care of people that's what we're supposed to do right we can't be afraid of these things could we possibly die yes so it as it was so in the early days of the church when people got sick the other people would sit with them even if it meant them getting the virus itself and them passing. And if they passed away, another person would come and sit with them and so on and so on. Why? It's because it's love. It's love. It's what it is that we do. We don't live in fear. There is no fear in Christ, and we're supposed to love people. That's what our answers are to this problem. And... We're taking, again, the world's view, automatically our leader's view, and placing it as what it is that we're supposed to do wrong. So many times that there, I, I've noticed this, and you know, you guys can have a problem with me or not, but I don't really care about that part. <laughs> but I, I do and I don't. I do in the sense that when people say, like, I'd rather... Walking into a place, I wear a mask because I'm concerned for old people when I go, you know, and where there's old people. Where there's old people, I want to, you know, make sure that I I don't want them to be afraid. It's it's rough being old. I mean, getting old is rough. <laughs> you know? After 50, so, it's all maintenance. So when you get into the place where everything hurts, you know, and you're like, and they're still got a smile on their face, that's success, right? So... Um, but I don't want to hurt anybody, and I do it f- for those reasons. But I also do know how ridiculously stupid this all is. Be- and if you've looked, not just listened, to the leaders around the world, you listen to, uh, or you actually look into it, you'll be so much more comfortable from what they're telling you. And these are, you know, anyways, I don't want to make this about the virus. And it's not about the virus. What it is about is us paying attention and only listening to the world and responding instead of the scripture and responding. Yeah. It, we're just, we're ruled by this. We're ruled by the world. And we just don't understand all the aspects that we are. It's easy to get caught up in a wave of fear. Yes. You know, because there are so many things driving, uh, you know, what is somebody going to think if I wear a mask, don't wear a mask? What is somebody going to think if this or that or the other thing? And it leaves you in a place where you're off balance. And uh, putting off the who cares, you know, who cares? Don't be afraid of where you plant your feet as long as it's on solid ground, which hopefully you've done your 
your your biblical homework and know where the truth lies. Which is the reason why we can't, because yeah. not a, like we were saying earlier, is that we're not all rooted. We're not rooted in the scriptures. We cannot defend our faith. So therefore, we just com- we just are complacent without we, knowing what else exactly. to do. You comply, and exactly. so you go back to the you go back to mama. In a lot of senses, where it's like I don't want to be the cause of three chains down the road. I'm carrying something for a couple of weeks and then pass it on to so and so, who passes it on, and something bad happens. Mm-hmm. You know, we got that heart of compassion there. But the idea is, like you said, not with just this one particular area, but in so many different areas. You can't just look at just the virus. You can't just look at the the, the race tensions. You can't just look at it's where we are generally socially. evil with yeah. the world. You know the general evil that goes on mm-hmm. in the world. You have to take a look at what is going on, quote unquote, behind the scenes, the spiritual scenes behind the curtain. Yeah. What is going on when you collectively take a look at all of the influence and control and the, the, the constant, you know, pushing of fear, 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 hatred, fear, more fear and more hatred. Yeah. And we get caught up in the the, the the news cycle of the day, no matter what your source is, and that's what you feed your consciousness with. Yeah. What about focusing on Christ and finding his solution and putting his heart before all of your fear? having the courage to look fear in the face and do what needs to be done anyway, take your stand on the truth, love and care for people, and can, and show them that there's a better way. All this relativism is, you know, like some dude just standing there putting their foot in the ground going, no, I'm not going to budge. But when they put their foot down, what are they really putting their foot down on? Yeah, Nothing. They don't even know. There's no foundation. So therefore, they may as well be levitating in midair and yeah. trying to push off, and there's nothing to push off from. Yeah. And so it, 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 so therefore, there has to be a foundation. And, and, and honestly, until it was time for the disciples to grow a pair and really go out and do it on their own, Paul or Peter was one of the hardest one questioned. Peter, do you love me? Yeah. And they used the agape. You know, the, 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 the perfect love that comes from God. Feed my sheep. Love me. You know, ask him again. Lord, you know that I do. Why are you asking this? And then he switched it up on the last one. Do you love me as a friend closer than a brother? Well, of course I do. And then he hugged him. Yeah. You know, the restoration was complete from, from him having just a few days prior rejected Christ outright and said, no, I don't know him. And then the rooster crowed and he realized that Jesus was right and he went off and Thomas did not believe unless he touched those mm-hmm. spots on his hand. And so there's you can see in the spiritual working of things in today's view that we have people starting to rise up. Yeah. Starting to take a look at what's going on. Standing. Getting a found, you know, finding their feet underneath them after being buffeted around because it's like, well, wait a second. The wind's getting really heavy right now. The waves are rising. You feel that initial rush of fear, and then you finally turn to Jesus and say, hey, wake up. And he's like, well, what's the matter with you guys? I was taking a nap. Why'd you get me up for this? You could have said this. Yeah. But to show you that the Son of Man has the power over the earth, I'm going to go ahead and make this die down. Boom, done. Yeah. Calm seas the rest of the way. And so that's the point where I think we as humans have to get to is that point of desperation where we can't do it. We aren't enough. No, that's right. And, and, and we have, and, and when the world has beaten us down into a certain spot, that's when the power of God comes over in you. And instead of hiding in that upper room like the, like the apostles were doing on the day before Pentecost, on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell, all the guys from the freaking uh, Israeli government or the you know, Jerusalem court were after him. Paul was already, Saul at the time, was already on the warpath. Yeah. Trying to get rid of the way Christianity. No, 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 no. This can't take foot. It's dislodging our power. Correct. All sorts of politics going on at that time. Mm-hmm. And but they was, went yeah. out of the upper room when the Holy Spirit fell on them, and they had thousands coming to Christ mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. Because that was the right time. Yeah. And so that's why I believe that we see us being buffeted around by the Jewish court. We, the, the Roman Empire is hot, you know, breathing down our necks. Yeah. There comes a time when the Holy Spirit goes, here you are. Bam. Feet go down on the ground on the net, solid foundation. You find the words within you 
and you proclaim the truth and change thousands. Yeah. That's where the change comes. Yeah. And, and and what we're about to go through, you know, anybody can hypothetically say, yeah, we got a war right around the corner. I mean, all sorts of evidence points to that. All sorts of of of, of scary things on the on the on the horizon, possibly it, because it's not it's it, it's not disagreement. It's it's hate. Yeah. Yeah. It we have we've gone from having different ideologies to hate. Yeah. And think about what what yeah. the, what this has actually done to our physical self as a. Uh, as a as a, as a body, when it comes to what we've had to deal with lately, we're right. not allowed to hug each other. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, we can't can't be close to each other. We can't have all these. Uh, there's just tons of rules and what it is and how we're supposed to conduct ourselves in order for nobody to die. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I touched you. Oh, well, how dare you? Um, Safe space. But it is true. It, <laughs> it, it, it. But okay, I'm gonna make this point. So, Paul. Again, going back to the point of him as a serial killer destroying all the Christians that he could destroy. Why was that? That's the pattern of the enemy of God. Mm-hmm. That was what was in him. Did he believe he was doing the right thing? Yes, by the religious, right, the religious leaders. He felt as though this is what I'm doing. And he passionately got one after those people. That is the enemy of God. Does the enemy of God change? No. He's got the same mission. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're facing today. Mm -hmm. We're in a place where we're now, the Christians, anything to do with Jesus, we need to suppress it. We need to get, you know, make sure that nobody knows about this. So you got big tech all over the place. Who knows if they will, people will even see this at this point. But they're wiping Christianity out. That's what they want. It's not going to happen. Let's mm. get that straight. Mm. <laughs> no. It's not going to happen, but because what, what happened with Paul? Christ came in there, blinded him, and said, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? It wasn't God that was telling him to do this. And many of the Christian faith right now have a real big problem. I don't understand this have a real big problem with the church standing up for itself. And they know and they recognize that things are not right and things are going against. And like like in California, okay, uh, the cesspool, dude. Oh, my gosh. How people live there, I'll never know anymore. But obviously those people need to be loved and everything else. But everything that's going on there is crazy. No one can deny. There is... Thousands and thousands of people leaving this one place. Why? Because the restrictions are so heavy. And to the point where you're not even allowed to sing. You're not even allowed to practice your your belief system. Yeah. So loving each other, they're trying to remove that factor. No, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to touch. Don't touch. No, you have to stay this far away because, you know, the virus has a measuring tape. You know, it knows where it can't get you. <laughs> You know what I mean? That Can't whole thing. Get you at it's just pathetic. It's Can't path- get you over here. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is absolutely pathetic for us to even believe what's being told to us. I mean, it, it really is, and we're just like, oh yeah, I guess you know, it's pathetic. It really is. Um, but Christians all over the place are having this debate. Well, should I listen to the Word of God? Or should I listen to the world? Ah, let's stick with the world because they kind of know what they're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. What? Larry had a good question. Yeah. What do we do to change it? Yes. Yeah. And, um... Almost at time. Oh, Almost. okay. No problem, dude. All right. Yeah, well, I'll just, I'll just yeah. blah, blah, blah real quick yeah. then. Um, okay. so, what do we, so what do we do? So what do we do about... So what do we do about changing all of this? How do we begin to turn the course? And I honestly, it, you know, I, some of it may be thrust on us at the last minute. In the meanwhile, get used to knowing God in the middle of suffering. Yeah. Identify with the sufferings of Christ. You have Learn to meet what with that him. means. You have to understand what it means when you cry out, your grace is sufficient because you see the need for the cross. Mm-hmm. You see the need for the power of God to flow through you because you can't do it on your own. 
And that's where the rubber meets the road at its very center. Now from there, you know, we can we have we have all sorts of different missions that we could do. You know, some could you know like like David was a soldier, you know, in, 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 and established in the boundaries and of the of the kingdom of Israel, and then Solomon, who followed him up, was not a man of war at all. God did not need that at the time. What he needed was a a really wise man who was sensitive to him, and that was the one who he had build the temple. Yeah. And so there are going to be different people with different gifts, with different callings that are going to go out and do all sorts of different things. doesn't mean one is better or worse than the other or more noble or ignoble or what have you. You know, there, there's, there's no honor, there's no glory in war and violence. No. None. It no. is just straight devastation, straight heartache, straight loss, so, period. So it is, one, if, if you don't have a steady time with the Lord on a daily basis because you're too busy or for whatever the reason may be it is it is absolutely now time it, and absolutely essential that you do meet with him um, because through all of this process if we're not giving God the time and care to where we read his scripture and we speak to him we talk with him and we're supposed to pray without ceasing, you're going to need to do that coming up, whether you like it or not, because you're going to absolutely, you you will see no other answer in sight. You'll always be confused and you always have a problem because you're not, do, you're not paying attention to it. Now, the other part is humility. Now, Larry and Mary, they've been through a whole heck of a lot. And, and, Larry's come to a certain place in their life, and Mary's come to a certain place in their life where they've just what? They've dropped so many things where they're like, and this is why this relationship is amazing. You look at this thing and you go, yeah, it really is, because you've got like, at times you were just like, are they going to really murder each other? You know what I mean? Like, are they going to really stab each other? I don't know, really know what's going to happen. Yeah. But, uh, but they went from those things because he had unforgiveness in heart. And I don't really know all the details because, I mean, obviously he's a brother and you're, you used to talk to women about the depth things, you know, those things. But I do know with him, he had unforgiveness in his heart and he had to let that go. You had to let stuff go about him and you had to let stuff go about her in order for any of this to even make. Now it's like, you know, your relationship is what is something to be admired because it's resilient. You know? Why? Mm -hmm. Because you high five. Okay, you high five. made choices. No Bless you guys. <laughs> but wh why is that? You had to give up and he had to give up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good point there. You had to. Otherwise it's not gonna work. He would have he could have never leave you and it would have never been the case because he's just not never in his entire, you know, I'm dead serious. No matter how upset this dude got, he's just like, no, I'm going to make it work. So, uh, but it's unconditional love. You guys decided. You dropped and yeah. you dropped. So what? how does this work? You had to know God for that to happen. Because there's no way you would have made that decision had you not known God. It's just not. True. It's not true. true. You were taught unconditional love. I would have made a worse decision probably 25 years before that. Mm -hmm. When you were talking, I didn't take my own life. Yes. There, you have nothing left. When yeah. You don't know God or have that level of understanding of love. Yeah. I wouldn't even have made it that far. So you couldn't. In life. And there's no <laughs> way in the church no that we can make that. it unless we do that. Mm -hmm. We yes, unless we humble ourselves, we let things go, and we begin to get close to Him, because it that is the only way that we're going to make it through as the church the only way humility and meeting with him we have to know his scripture why do you have to know his scripture because somebody's going to ask somebody's going to say um what is this hope that you have here mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. this you know and you have to have an answer for that and when you they have probably you know, they have probably you meet somebody that's got problems that they're going through hard times that you have an answer in scripture Mm -hmm. It doesn't return void. So what you what it is that you memorize, what it is that you take serious, you end up giving to somebody else, and it saves their life. Yeah. It saves their life. I've been saved by Scripture many times. But if that person didn't know that Scripture, I mean, I don't know. God's, God's, 
That's pretty amazing when it comes down to that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you know, reminding you of things at the right time, all those kind of things. I mean, there's so many times I realize that I never even memorized a certain thing, and it's stuck in my head because I've as many times God said, "Hey, remember that?" Yeah. You know, never sat down to memorize it, but there it is. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's another. I don't want to say dividing point, but God says that there will be a separating uh, wheat from the chaff and sheep from the goats yep. and those kind of things. And it's where you really realize those who have the power of God in their life and an authentic relationship versus one that is based on social tradition, social religious tra tradition, mm -hmm. you know, where it is, like you said, the, 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 you know, Sunday from noon or from, from eight to noon or whatever you're in church. And then the rest of the week is whatever, yeah. you know, um, uh, and, and, and certain people just, you know, just have the idea of, of if I'm just good enough, you know, I'm a good, I'll be a good enough Christian or something like that. Never really acknowledging that they've become their own gods and defined what Christianity was going to be for them. They do the bare minimum. Do the bare minimum. And, 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 and a lot of times the Christian walk is uncomfortable. I mean, get used to that. There is no way that a human being can find any traction to grow unless there's resistance. And until you're able to say, you know what, I'm willing to face resistance for the rest of my life so that I can continually get strong. Well, congratulations, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what you're going to look like at the end. Yeah. Because he fought waste, weights his entire life. Yeah. And um, that's the only way that you can become strong is if you're ready to embrace that kind of a life. But in those deep times, I want to read this scripture real quick, and I think we're coming up on our end. But, um, you know, so, so we have resistance that comes against us, a separation that, that we have to eventually make the decision. Are we going to choose to choose the life of discomfort in order to grow closer with God and find out what it means to drink from the wellspring of life? Hmm. Or are we going to say, no, I'm too scared of discomfort. I'm not willing to surrender either through pride, what I'm going to lose, or just straight up fear for the sake of a God that is somewhere up in the sky that I know of but don't know. Mm -hmm. Having the form of godliness but denying its power. And none of it is God's will. None of it right. is God's will. Here's what, yeah, exactly. You know, and here, here's how God says he'll meet us, though, in misery. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 61, uh, verses 1 through 3. The Lord's uh, Spirit, or the, the Lord Almighty's Spirit is upon me because God has anointed me to preach good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release to those who are bound, to proclaim a year of the Lord's favor and a day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them all a garland for their ashes and the joy of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. And I think as the King James it says oaks, a really strong tree, mm. a really, uh, you know, just a magnificent, you know, plant. Um, and, you know, you talk about majestic oaks. Those are the things that, that come out of your character as you embrace the freedom from slavery to the flesh. Mm. To proclaim, he's come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance. It is mine to repay, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. Uh, to provide for those who mourn, he gives you a crown, you know, something to celebrate in, repla in, in replacement for the ashes that you're just sitting there and in, and in pain with. The oil of joy for mourning, you know, to refresh the look on your face. That's what the oil of joy represents. It, you know, when you're downtrodden, you know, the Lord says, you know, uh, you know, don't look like you've been fasting all these days, but put oil on your face so that you don't look like you've been doing this sacrifice and therefore bring pride to yourself. Mm. You know, it, it, he provides that. Yeah. It's the cure for our pride in a lot of ways. But it, it, kept, it lets us know who's in charge. Yeah. You know, because we can't control grief, loss, war, famine. We can't control any of those things. But we can always choose where we're going to go to find our hope. Yeah. And if your hope is based on a fairy tale or some relativistic thing without absolute truth, you're going to be flailing. 
like in water and not able to gain any traction, straw, you know, just swim as hard as you can, run as hard as you can, and you're going to go nowhere. Because you're leaning no on your resistance. own understanding. Yeah. Correct, yes. And, 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 you know, but when you have that solid foundation of God saying, here is the force for you to push against and you can push from it and gain traction. Yeah. That's what we're missing. And that is what we find in the midst of, of pain is, is the, the oil of joy, mm. the, the, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yeah. And, and it, it gives you hope to be able to bring, you know, get through those times. However, it requires a humble heart to say, I can't do it. Yeah. And to turn there. Yes. And with as much pride and all of the, uh, what is it? Uh, you got self esteem, you got uh, self talk, you got self aggrandizement, you have all these different self conscious, self, all these epidemics of the self that psychology wants to bring up. If we're too, you know, if we do not put that aside for the sake of I give up myself for the sake of the cross of Christ then we are powerless to be able to actually move forward as a Christian. Yeah. We have to kick that pride. Yeah. That's a good wrap. Yeah, the, the, these two got closer the more they gave up. Yep. It's so crazy, but that's how God works. Yeah. You oh, give, me? Yeah, you oh. guys. Huh? No. Yeah. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> He's too. Uh, He's too. So, um, huh. the Lord is near to the heart, uh, to the heartbroken. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin. Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from them all. It's Psalm 34, 18 through 19. Amen. It's beautiful. That's a great way to wrap it. Yeah, man. Uh, more than weather coming. Mm, oh, fine. it's about to hit us? Yeah. All right. I'm going to step outside then. We may die because yeah. the weather is so bad. Yeah. You don't see this. <laughs> the weather is so bad it may kill us. I've heard that it's the worst storm in recorded history. It's not true. Well, I didn't say a lot. But I can say that and other people will think, was it true? <laughs> no, dude, it's just the result of global warming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there it is. And with that, well, your show. All right, yeah, so yeah. Uh, um, well, we're going to keep doing these types of things, getting together, talking about these crazy, you know, crazy times, try to come up with some answers and uh, what the Word of God has to say about that. Uh, we love you all. We'll see you.